Good evening, everyone. Welcome back. I brought back the long good. Everyone was telling me, where did it go? I think their internet connection is broken or something, but I brought back the long good for you. I know you guys have been missing it. I'm Kabir Siegel. I'm your host, Quarantine Concert Series, show number 95, baby. We're almost there, almost at the Royal 100. Thanks for being with us all this ways. People have been asking me, what are you going to do? What are you going to do when the show's over? Um, the real answer is we're going to go fishing. We rented a boat, actually. Let me show you the boat. Sandra and I, we went out to the dock. We were looking around. We said, that's the boat. That's the one we want. And so she, she we put a deposit down of three cajones, and we got ourselves a boat. And we're going to go fishing. And everyone's invited to join us. I didn't wear my Hawaiian shirt, actually. And we thought that with five more shows left, why not? Why not? Why not go fishing? So I think Sandra is actually fishing for the image right now, but she'll find it eventually. Have faith in her. I also want to say by now, everyone knows what we're doing. It's the quarantine concert series. We're living in a time of pandemic. All the gigs have gone away. And there's our fishing boat. See it? Love it. That's actually Oreo and Maui. Uh, fishing up in the front of the boat. That's Maui, I think. Let's, if, I don't know if we can solo the shots. We have a different kind of graphic thing we're doing today. But that's obviously me in the back of the boat. I'm always in the rear for some reason. And uh, Camilo is telling me how to fish, and Sandra is looking out into the horizon. So we're almost there on fishing. All right. Um, so we're going through this quarantine by now, you know, the world's kind of opening up again, uh, but we're still living through a time where gigs have gone away. It's difficult for creative professionals. Um, Carnegie Hall has canceled gigs into 2021. I'm here in Atlanta at my parents' place. In Atlanta, the concert halls here are not opening up. So it's still very difficult for creative professionals. I wrote an op-ed about this recently. Let's put that op-ed on the screen. It's called Become a Patron of the Arts to Help the U.S. Economy Get Back in Tune. The arts actually make up 5%, 5% of the U.S. gross domestic product, right? That includes, obviously, movies and uh, television. Independent, independent artists are actually part of this 5%. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. And so independent artists, local, they make cities more vibrant, more interesting, um, more worth living, right? They're, it's the, the spice of life, seeing uh, local artists and people in the performing arts uh, centers wherever we are. So there's many ways you can become an, a patron. There's always been a link with a symbiosis between patrons and artists going back to the Middle Ages. So you can have, everyone has birthday parties, right? Hire an artist to play a private Zoom over your birthday party, very uh, weddings, bar mitzvahs, any kind of social event, happy hours. Next time you have a happy hour, hire an artist, right? You can also um, uh, donate to charities that are, you know, sp particularly focused on artists affected, freelance artists. And also buy the merchandise, buy the hat, buy the mouse pad, buy the left sock, buy the right sock. Do whatever you can to support independent artists. This is an organization we like. It's called the Afro-Latin Jazz Alliance. Arturo O'Farrell has started this initiative. He's raising $100,000 to benefit independent artists. We're halfway there. If you have the means, please donate if you can to the Afro-Latin Jazz Artist Emergency Fund. And all the donations go to artists trying to make it in this day and age. All right. Um, I do want to thank the folks at All About Jazz for simulcasting these concerts. Thanks to Michael Ritchie. It's their 25th anniversary. If you're an artist, go make an artist page. And uh, congratulations, Michael, on his 25th anniversary. I appreciate all the journalism you're doing at All About Jazz. They're going to be simulcasting, I think, the rest of our shows. So hi to the audience there. Um, we're also doing quarantine film conversations. So I made my first movie this past year, and I was really excited, but all the film festivals have been canceled. So these are conversations I have in the morning, 10.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. Eastern with filmmakers who've had their movies accepted, accepted into top film festivals, like the Tribeca Film Festival and South by Southwest. This guy, his name is Sammy Khan, Academy Award nominee. Just spoke to him the other day. His recent movie is called The Last Out, and it's about Cuban baseball players who are trying to make it in the major leagues, and it was accepted into South by Southwest this year. So all these films, people spend so long on these films. Like, what do you do with it? Without the film festival, can't get the sales agent, can't get the distributor. It's really difficult to do. So hopefully these are the stories, these are the movies you're going to see on your Netflix, you're going to see on your in your movies and your movie screens in the coming weeks and months of your Netflix or Hulu's or HBO's. These are the stories. These are the movies. All right. 
What's up next, Andrew? I don't know which, what order we're going in today. So I think just put something on the, on the screen and I will I will respond to call. Ah, here we go. Word of the day. There's always a music word of the day. There will be a pop quiz at the end of this broadcast. If you can tell me what the word of the day is, you'll get a prize. What is the prize? A dog giving you a puppy. A dog giving you a trophy. A puppy giving you a trophy. There it is. The artist today, his name starts with a P, P-A. So in honor of him, the word of the day is pantonality. Pantonality. I think he knows this word. It's an English term. Term used to describe music that is not in one tonality or key, but shifts freely among many or all keys, synonymous with atonal and atonality. Pantonality. We might, if we're lucky, you might hear some pantonality from the artist today. We will see. All right. Um, music provides, produces a kind of pleasure which human cannot do without. This has been something going on for ages. Even Confucius was talking about it. And we want your ideas for the final few broadcasts. Um, we're trying to change it up from the format, conventional format. So if you have any ideas, one idea we had was to, instead of doing a music broadcast, to actually have a staring contest. And so uh, Camilo and I, we always stare at each other doing sound check. He always wins this. Camilo is very good at staring. I mean, he's, he's the undisputed champion. Uh, we also thought about doing a show just with puppets. So if you want to see puppet a puppet show, some people think I'm, I am a puppet. But if you want to see a puppet show, quarantine concert series, let us know. We can do that too. All right. You can find us everywhere. We're on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, Cracker. Make us more out of it. We're also on LinkedIn. 40 million people have lost their jobs in this pandemic. If you're watching on LinkedIn and you're looking for a job right now and hunting for your next job, please stay with us. And we hope to keep you motivated and inspired to go crush your job search. Thanks for being with us in the music. All right. And now for the best part, good to meet the incredible artists. These are really two incredible artists, two friends. And it's been a pleasure um, knowing them, collaborating with them. And they're both sort of genius maestros who are mu making music. Um, I would call them both high priests, high priests of music because it almost feels like, feels like a religious calling, the way they have devoted themselves to the monastery of music and the way they have been blessed with their talents and have cultivated their talents. And I like this religious theme. Their music is divinely inspired, and it's such a joy to welcome them to the show. So Pablo is an acclaimed saxophonist, composer, arranger from Venezuela. Tony Sukar is an acclaimed percussionist, composer, arranger, Peruvian American. There they are. See the credentials right there. Please welcome to the show the incredible Pablo Gil and Tony Sukar. Hello, Kabir. Hello, Tony. What's up? Hey, great to see you guys. You both look good, and there's no big long beards, and you guys seem pretty well kempt, actually. So looking good. Let me ask you first, guys. Um, Pablo, maybe first to you. How is the quarantine? affected you so far what have you had to cancel that was lined up and ready to go well let me start um first of all thanks kabir for having us in your show it's a pleasure and it's an honor we've seen you know the great artists that you've been hosting here and um yeah thanks thanks for inviting us to this uh awesome opportunity to share our music with your public so yeah as everybody i was extremely affected by the virus and there was a moment in which it was like you know falling in the without without a parachute right because there didn't seem to be like anything down there in terms of work way way into I mean it still isn't but um I had of course all my gigs got canceled uh, but also I play in a TV show you know um, the musical director and the, the show will get canceled too and it's you know i don't know when or if it, it will come back on, on air so basically as most other people that live in the gig industry you know um i'm like sort of doing certain uh unemployment however i have had some productions some recordings and things that are coming my way that are uh, starting to feel that uh, normality is slowly coming back I hear you. Both of you guys are in Miami. So we have Miami in the house. I'm in Atlanta. 
We have the South represented. So everyone watching at home, tell us where you're watching from. Extra points for counties. We love counties. So city, state, and counties. I want to let Pablo and Tony know everywhere that they're lighting up around the world. We have people from India tuning in. Um, Tony, tell me, how have you been able to structure your time? Because it's easy to get into a rut in quarantine. Do you wake up at the same time? Do you make a cup of coffee? Uh, what is your day-to-day -day like? What is one day like in the life of Tony Sukar quarantined? Well, um, man, it's pretty it's pretty intense, bro, because um, constantly working. You know, I had a... This 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 Raices project that we released and now we're promoting it's it's a lot of work with content because I'm very big on social media and and bringing the music to the people you know through that platform so um, I basically wake up after a couple hours of sleep no matter what time I sleep <laughs> it's like six in the morning and then I just go straight and get on on my little home studio this is my studio at my parents' house but I also have like another uh, small little um, small room in my apartment where, where I have a nice little setup as well. So I am doing a lot of video production, a lot of video editing, a lot of, uh, you know, interviews. And of course, also working on some uh, production work for, for these next albums I'm producing. So, so yeah, man, we just launched another song today. It was a Christian song with uh, Alvaro Lopez, which is an incredible drummer um, and big Christian artist with uh with angel lopez which is another excellent um singer songwriter from the latin world has had many many hits and yeah man just uh maintain myself busy i hear you um this is a question we get a lot what are you guys both listening to in quarantine have you have you discovered any i know we're all producing stuff but have you discovered any old music that you've returned to maybe pablo you can take this and what's on your spotify what are you streaming these days as as you move throughout th throughout your day Well, in my case, it's going to sound a little bit cliche, but um, I've been checking out Jacob Collier uh, quite a bit, you know, uh, in terms of the compositional aspect, you know, on the voice, the, his arrangement for voices and, and the whole orchestration um, concept, you know, so um, I've been listening to that. I've been listening to a lot of Bach, you know, and mostly playing it, you know, just it's been good for my soul in this period of, uh, you know, crisis to, to like, I usually start in the morning and I play some Bach. In the, pa Pablo, in the come a little bit closer to the microphone. It's a little hard, hard to hear you. Sure. Yeah. Step into the microphone. There you go. Yeah, I was saying that um, I'm playing some Bach sometimes, you know, during this uh, quarantine. And it uh, helps me, like, get into a good, um, you know, a good vibe. Gotcha, gotcha, and, and you, Tony? Man, I'm, I'm, uh, I listen to everything, really, man. I, mean, I listen to a lot of salsa music, bro, because that's what I love. I just love jamming, you know. And and um, who are the to, who are the undiscovered man. salsa? Because when I listen to salsa, it's Eddie Palmieri, Tito Puente. Who else is there that you would recommend if you're if you're starting salsa for the first time? Who should people begin with? You should begin with. Yeah. You should begin with this guy named Tony Sukar. He's amazing, bro. You gotta love his music, bro. So make sure to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> to him no man there's a lot of great new artists you know um i was I talking mean, more more the vintage stuff oh vintage stuff. you go oh, yeah. back yet yeah. well uh well from what, what you were talking about ruben blades you know it fits into that criteria because of the palmieri tito puente uh, celia cruz obviously the old school uh rey barreto you have all the fania all stars hector lavo and then you move on to the cuban invasion which is amazing uh which is the you know like lo bamban you have Irakere, which is an excellent Latin jazz, uh, probably the best Latin jazz band to ever exist uh, till this day. I mean, they had the best horn arrangements and the best horn players ever, best section. And I'm actually very influenced by that because, um, you know, throughout my productions, like with Pablo, man, you know, we, we, we threw in a lot of lines in there inspired by Chucho Aldez and what he would do with his horn players are just crazy brass lines that you it'll never be able to be played live but who cares <laughs> you know <Yeah. laughs> it's fine i mean we, we recorded and it sounds amazing uh so yeah there's there's a lot of there's a lot of excellent um you know you just you just have to see especially from the generation from right now like for example alexander abreu and habana de primera is, is incredible mm -hmm. so i listen to a lot of tropical <clears throat> music but then again you know i always throw in some richard bona not because I work with him, but because I've been a fan of his since forever, and I just enjoy his music. 
a lot of the Brazilian stuff that he's done, a lot of the yeah. sort of semi funk pop jazz yeah, and amazing. the mystical. It's, it's so great. Um, yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Well, I want to talk about the Rice's Jazz Orchestra. It's an incredible project. Um, and I also want to give um, Pablo a chance to play. So, Pablo, maybe you can um, begin playing something, and then I'll ask you on the other side about uh, about the album itself. How does that sound? All right. So, um, as I was saying before, uh, before we started, but I would like to give people a little bit of an insight into how, how we came up with uh, the music that we recorded. Like Tony and I, we've been working on this project for three and a half years. And, um, you know, we've been building out the repertoire. We didn't just like, you know, uh, go out and get some arrangements that were already pre-existent. We, we composed and arranged most of the music. So it's been a process in which we've been like, um, just discovering where we're going. So uh, the first, uh, the first single that we released is Mais que Nada. You know, this is a, like a very well-known, almost you could say overplayed uh, Brazilian song. So when we got started, like we felt that we had, we needed to do something with it, like do something, not just, uh, you know, like play the song and, and have it sung by, a, by this amazingly beautiful voice that we invited on the album, which is uh, Anaji from, from Brazil. She's the winner of the, uh, 2018 Latin Grammys for best con uh, new uh, Brazilian artist. And um, I believe that Tony met her at, uh, in Las Vegas during that ceremony and they like, they hit it, like they, they started talking and they started, you know, started the, the, the project of celebrating in this. So, you know, Tony and I sat down and said, okay, so what can we do with, with Anaji? And then, uh, um, you know, we'd make a little list of the songs that we liked, you know, in the Brazilian, uh, there's so much amazing Brazilian music that it's really hard to choose because there's so much good stuff. So we came out to like three songs. I remember that I Would You Be Bear was there and then Mais Que Nada and something else. But then very quickly we just like started two or three ideas with Mais Que Nada because that's always the way we started, like really simple stuff that gets us started. So we thought that we wanted to start with some like uh, heavy funky thing so we came up with this line right and that's like the bass it's a bass with uh, um with a low brass uh unison and as a matter of fact i remember that once uh because let's let's put let's make this clear i'm the crazy one and uh tony's the mature one He's got the experience and the maturity, and I got like the crazy vibes. So I had this idea that um, we were going to have four tubas walking down uh, some kind of a carnival parade. And uh, I was imagining the four tubas playing this. Uh, it didn't happen with the four tubas, but they have the trombones and the bass trombone. So then we have the Anagi's voice start, you know, singing the melody. That's a typical uh, line, uh, the introduction for Mashkanada, but it happens on top of the bass line that we were doing before. So that gives us a, 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 a really different uh, thing. Uh, um, yeah, so that was really interesting. Then we moved into the regular melody of Mashkanada, and then we brought it down from that heavy, funky uh, vibe of the beginning into a more like an intimate bossa nova setting so that we can hear her voice when she starts singing the melody, uh, you know. Actually, it wasn't us. It was uh, our awesome bass player, Ronder Padilla, who is one of the most amazing musicians on the planet right now. 
And um, he came up with this. So this progression. It's really like. It's pretty hip because it's like. Um, from, from those of you who are musicians, it's all minor chord. Parallel. It's D minor and B minor 7 and G minor. So um, it creates a really cool vibe. And that's what we use for the sax solo. song which appears in the middle of our arrangement so it's actually like two songs and the middle song is Benimbao by the great poet Vinicius de Moraes from Brazil they have so many awesome composers singers and the, the Brazilian uh, version of Portuguese is such a musical language that um, you know they have just so this great output and uh, I come from Venezuela and we are neighbors Brazil and their culture has inspired us a lot and I have my, my daughter's middle name is Elise for Elise Regina this great um, Brazilian singer anyway from then we move into Beniba which is this other song and we create like some sort of a tribal sound with that choral <laughs> a lot of percussion going on until we arrive to this capoeira So that's the end of Capoeira. And then we... Yes! That was awesome. Yes! That's pop. <laughs> you guys sure, sure I, sound like a crowd. I love that. that. I love, they love that. you in Atlanta. That's what, come so, here, you're, you're, on, you're on fire. You're on fire with, with, with the, I translate. I with translate the, with the sampler. I translate emojis into uh, real life. So we got... Don, Don Marie, clap, clap, clap. He's panning applause for you. Thank you, Don. Manisha's got Corazon, Corazon. Camilo always does it in, here we go, Max, Maxine's always good. Clap, 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 Corazon, 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 Corazon. Clap, clap, clap. And then we got Daisy, of course, with the Venezuelan claps. 
Daisy Bravo dancing. The lady with the castanets. A lot of love for you. So, There's so much work goes into these projects, so can't hear you too much applause. But I hear you. All right, let me uh, settle it down. There we go. Is this? Is they this love an you. Alcohol free they, zone. Oh, that's another thing. We should ask. Um, what is everyone drinking at home? I'll probably put that up on the screen. What are you drinking? Let us know. What are you drinking, Tony? Man, I'm not drinking anything. I don't have anything in around me. I'm here just hanging around. <laughs> what are you having, uh, Pablo? Um, just a beer. Yeah, Super cerveza. Nice. Take the nice. of playing in front of so many people that I can't see. <laughs> it's probably good that way. Cheers. This is well. First, I do want to say um, I wanted to get through it with that. I do want to make a very special announcement. Uh, today is Pablo's birthday. Yo, Pablo, it's your birthday. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, bro. Oh! Feliz yeah. cumpleaños. We actually got you a cake. We got you a present. Maybe I just spoiled it. Um, I think we should present you our cake. Happy birthday. Well, yeah, we got you a very, we have a very fancy um, advertising budget and uh, banner budget. So we got you some fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> They're right outside. Happy birthday. I love Pablo. it. I love it, Bob. Please come on. I want everyone at home wishing him a happy birthday. These fireworks took a lot of time and energy to download and save onto our computer and then put into a PowerPoint slide. And we have, we have, I really appreciate the effort. Feliz cumpleaños. I learned that word in Spanish just for you today. And uh, yeah. So do you have any birthday wishes? Thank you, Kabir. Birthday wishes. Um, you know, my wishes right now are mostly uh, music related. Everything's going good. You know, family's great. My kid is doing great. So, you know, gotcha. I right now my wishes are going into our common project, which is, you know, uh, Raíces Jazz Orchestra. Good segue. Good segue. Batman, you're someone who knows talking points really, really well. <laughs> it's it's uh, again, look at all the see world. Um, but let's talk about the Rice of Jazz Orchestra. It was a wonderful project and a blessing to collaborate with both of you. Um, Pablo, tell, tell, explain what the project is for those who don't know. What does Rice's mean? We have you know, mostly an English speaking audience here um, and educate us here on the project. Well, I've been talking a lot. I would actually like to leave Tony the chance to <laughs> tell everybody about Raices. Come on. Go Tony. for it. You're so eloquent. No, man, Pablo, you're the man, bro. You're the one who, who inspired this whole thing. It all was generated from La Cabeza de Pablo Gil, <laughs> from, from the brain. And, and you know, I was, I was the chosen one. You know, to become a partner with him on this, and and for me, it was it was a pleasure because I've always wanted to do, like I said, a big band project. You know what I love about it is that it really highlights um, the Latin culture. You know, uh, in terms of the true roots of these rhythms that I love to play. You know, I, I just I love. I mean, I'm a percussionist, so that's that's what percussionists do. We we learn about different cultures, we learn about different drums and rhythms from everywhere. So what I really enjoyed about this was creating these arrangements with Pablo and these compositions um, to fit really well with the groove part, right? I mean, that that's something that I feel like, if anything, big bands, you know, they, they really concentrate on more of the orchestration side of things and more on, uh, you know, the horn arrangement side and, and just how intricate harmonically something can be because it's big band jazz right it's jazz but this is rice's jazz orchestra so rice is, is like a true important uh element to this and that's what i felt like where i could really become it and play a part uh to make sure that the groove and and it's just everything is just burning you know um and get that real street you know organic sound whether it's if it's a peruvian lando festejo or if we're, you know, doing buleria, or if we're doing samba, for example, where we collaborated with Tucci Rodriguez, which is an incredible percussion. It's one of the best that I've ever seen, you know, and, and you know, going to Puerto Alegre to, to actually collaborate with him and Anaji. Uh, so, you know, it, it was it was an incredible project. We also went to Cuba, recorded with Osain del Monte, which is an incredible bata group. 
We had Richard Bona, which you can't get any more pure than that. I mean, Richard Bona is not the Latin, but, but the Latins are Richard Bona. Like, he is the source, right? Yeah. I mean, Africa is the source of all these incredible rhythms, and it all comes, comes back to to that. So, um, I feel like it's it's an incredible project. People on social media have been going crazy with it. We've gotten so many great messages, and this is only the beginning because we've just given them the album, but we have so many great videos coming, and. Um, you know, we're gonna make it fun. We're gonna make it fun for the for the people to to really enjoy not only jazz lovers and big band lovers, but just music in general, especially especially Latin music lovers. Yeah, totally. I, I um I produce a lot of big band jazz records, and this one really stands out, and it's really been a, a pleasure. Thanks for including me in the project, guys. I I really appreciate it. For um, sure. Let's take a look at the cover too. Um, maybe you can tell us about the artist on the cover. I thought the artwork was really powerful, actually, and I like how the the roots kind of come out. Who did the uh, did the artwork on the cover? So I have a, a great friend that lives. Uh, actually, she lives. Uh, she kind of hops around different countries in Europe. She's she's one of those really open uh, travelers. But she's originally from Argentina. Amazing artist. Her name is Lila. Actually, you're gonna have to like. This, uh, disculparme. How, I, how do I say? Like you're gonna have to excuse uh, me. Excuse me. Yeah, because yeah. I don't know her last name because I just know her as Lila because that's, her, that's cool. Every she comes out everywhere. Um, but I've worked with her. A couple. She created the logo for Races, and then we kind of developed it into the artwork just because we loved how the logo looked. And you know, like you see the R and and the roots are going into the R. Then the J stands for Pablo Gil. No, not Gil. Just his saxophone, <laughs> right? And then that O is the timbales with my sticks on it. So we're all in, involved in it, um, but it's Raices Jazz Orchestra. We self-titled the album because this is our debut record for this big band. Uh, there's going to be, you know, there's a big future for it. We're going step by step, and we're just so psyched that that we've released this, and we're thankful, Kabir, for your contribution to this record. I mean, you know, you bringing in Alan Silverman, for example, on the mastering was like, right on the money you know with with how we wanted to sonically sound because we didn't treat this big band album as just a pure jazz record right uh, we wanted it to sound very like fresh and current in a way uh so we had sort of a more of a pop approach with tropical at the same time so alan was the perfect balance because alan was like okay you know what we have to we have to balance it out and i felt like you guys are on that team of of bringing it so that the essence of big band and jazz sonically never goes away, you know, but then we still add that excitement and a Latin flair. So it was amazing that collaboration. I feel like that's what really, you know, we just put the icing on the cake with that. Um, <laughs> and it was a big addition. Like if it wasn't for that, I feel like we wouldn't, you know, we would never, we would not be nearly as happy, but obviously we have, you know, the Santiago Cabriles on the mixing that did an incredible job from Venezuela. I think Pablo, if I'm not mistaken, I think 80% of the entire credits of this entire record are Venezuelans, right? I mean, am I mistaken or not? <laughs> it's crazy. There's so much Venezuelan talent, but I mean, I'm telling you in Miami, there's just so many great musicians from Venezuela and Pablo being one of them, obviously I'm extremely blessed that uh, I'm able to be able to work with them because I'm learning so much from them. And we were able to do Joropo, for example, uh, which is one of the most incredible genres ever. And they transformed one of my compositions into this grand arrangement of Joropo that I would have never imagined. So it was thanks to the Venezuelan invasion. <laughs> yes, it's it's an, it's an incredible album. Everyone, uh, let's put their website up on the screen if we have it. Uh, you can obviously type in Rice, Rice's Jazz Orchestra into Spotify. Subscribe, look them up on iTunes, Amazon, anywhere you consume music. Buy, click, stream. Also, these links at the bottom, go to facebook.com slash Pablo Gil Sachs and also tonysucre.com. Follow them on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the above if you want to stay um, in the loop with all their incredible, incredible music that they're putting out. And, the, you know, the future is bright because these guys are doing it at the highest, highest level. Um, we would love to hear another song, Pablo. And while you're thinking about that, I just want to say if you have a question out there, please let us know and I will try to get them to opine opine to your questions so just drop a comment and we will put it up on the screen all right what would you like to do next pablo and well uh since i mean when i uh when you invited me to the show um which was not long ago 
I didn't have that much time to prepare. So I thought, what do I want to play? And right now my mind is full with this project with Raices just because um, it just came out last week uh, uh, because we put so much time into it. We put, we put three and a half years of uh, work into arranging, composing, recording, mixing, mastering, and doing all the process. It took a long time. So uh, my mind is full of that right now and um, all that music is coming back to me. And that's what I want to talk about right now. So. The next song that I want to explore um, is Invocation. It's a composition by um, Gil Goldstein and Bobby McFerrin. And uh, again, to talk a little bit about the genesis, the, the beginning of this uh, arrangement, it started when um, Tony started thinking about bringing Richard Bona to Miami and you know doing something with him with the big band. And we started thinking, what, what can we do, you know? So we, we looked at some classic African um, tunes, you know, but we didn't find anything that really appealed to us. And then he said, hey, I remember this video that I saw with Richard Bona and Bobby McFerrin doing this song, Invocation. So he showed it to me, and that was it. <laughs> Immediately, it, we knew that that was what we needed to do, and we just, right off the bat, we felt that we had to change the rhythm and uh, we same, we started with some ideas, started building it up, building it up, fleshing it out. And uh, by the time that Rich came to the studio, there was a pretty good, um, you know, base for him to record on. And we had the shape of the whole arrangement ready. We didn't have all the ideas, but we knew what we wanted. So he came and um, the melody of this song is so simple. It's like almost like a, you know, like a, an African lullaby. <laughs> and the name is Invocation. So it's really simple. You know, imagine something done for, for the ancestors or something. So the melody is very, very simple. <laughs> Yeah, very nice, very nice, very nice. 
Very nice. Golf clap. <laughs> the Grand Pablo Gym. I like that little tambourine you got there, man. I want to see some of the comments on Facebook. <laughs> so, 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 uh, stay with us, stay with us, um, Tony, stay with us, um, with his connection. So I want to ask, um, well, first of all, before, for anything, we like to pull the audience and, um, cause it's your birthday. We wanted to give you something. I actually don't know if it, if it's ready yet. If the cake is ready, let's please present it to, uh, to Pablo. Is the cake ready yet? Hard for me to know. This is, this show is different than any show we've done because we have multiple guests. So I can't, I can never see the preview of the slides. So please present the cake to. Oh, she's putting icing. She's putting icing. Okay. Also, um, I want to ask you about, um, about that song in particular. How did you go about writing out all the arrangements and stuff? Who, Walk me through the arrangement process. I love, I love, I worked with Gil Golston. I produced his last record. We tracked it in Switzerland. He's such a lovely person. And that song is such a famous, well known song. So, how did you try to breathe fresh life into that arrangement? <laughs> Tony, you want to take that? Point to the Tony. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a process like every other song in this record where it was very organic. It was very based on. Uh, you know, building building blocks, starting off with just um, just a groove, right? I mean, we all know that 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 melody is very mystical, and it's got like a lot of like uh, it's just it's just beautiful, and it it has a lot of space, right? So we decided to to bring in the batas as as a, as an element, right? So. Uh, for sure do it in like a six eight slow thing but then um that song when i like i like i said that song had always just been engraved in my head because of that video that i saw richard bono with bobby mcfur and i was like gosh like how much groove can these people have right and it was just richard on the bass man and bobby just singing and both of them doing their little things and playing shaking with their mouths and you know, and so we wanted to make a transition like that uh, in the arrangement to to fit and 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 um, just stick with that essence. So we went ahead and um, brought in Mark Yonas on the percussion, and he he definitely added so much, um, so many ideas in in this production. And so then once we we brought him into the studio, man, he he laid down some killer killer grooves on the gong guys. And we didn't really have much of the horn ideas or anything like that. It was mainly just, like I said, it was just bare bones rhythm, right? Rhythm and 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 harmony. So then, uh, after after that, we started like coming up with all the stabs and all the the breaks, and and then you know in the studio we just started putting it together. And then after that, uh, once we had some some sort of ideas to how it was all going to be laid out, we started programming the horns and. You know, uh, with with Pablo here in the studio, we would go bounce back of ideas, and then a lot of the orchestration element is Pablo's side, right? So then I would handle more of the percussion and more of the, um, you know, harmonic uh, ideas, especially when it comes to the to the montunos and and um, you know the 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 fire, the fire part of the song, right? Yeah, yeah, that's like my expertise. I'm always like trying to reach like an apex, um, and all the breakdowns. There's like there's like a little breakdown that goes. So that that's all like um and man it's it's just also letting Richard do his thing, right? So when Richard came to the studio, man, he added so much crazy stuff. And a lot of the things that you hear there were one take, man. His I improvs bet. on the vocal, one take, man, one take on the vocals. <laughs> and he's just killer, bro. Killer bass know, player. Man. And just... when you have somebody like that in the in the in the room, you know, you kind of let just just let him go a little bit. And then you start building after that. So we didn't really record any horns or anything like, oh, no. uh, like until after he recorded his vocal and after he recorded the bass as well. So that, that gave us a lot of ideas. And, got it. Got um, it. I have yeah. a few questions coming real quick. Uh, one question saying, Tony, I want to be, um, I want to, I aspire to have a career like yours. I'm just 
graduating school, what advice can you have to someone just uh, wants to be a professional musician just graduating school? Just graduating school, um, you know, I, I think the, I remember when I was graduating school, I, I was in a position where I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. I mean, it was literally like that. I remember graduating FIU and I was like, okay, I mean, nobody was really calling me for gigs. So I was, you know, I wasn't the best percussionist ever. I was a pretty okay co- percussionist. And, um, but I, 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 I found out that man in this industry, if, if you're not active and you're not going for it, you're not searching yourself for things, nothing's going to happen. Literally, your phone will never ring. Yeah. And and so that's what I did, man. I decided then that I needed to come up with a cool concept. And so my best advice is like, think of great ideas, but go out there and hustle. You know, it all comes down to your discipline and how hard you want to work. Yeah. Um, we have- there's one thing, there, yeah, there's one thing that I feel like is, is relative and it's talent. Talent is relative. I mean, yeah, there's people out there that are billion times more talented than me, but do they outwork me? I don't think so, man. I mean, I don't know anybody personally that can outwork me. Maybe you, Kabir, because I know that you're in the awake in the wee hours and early up in the morning. So I'm like, wait a minute, this guy is kind of like outworking me. It's not. That's not good. That's not good, you know. <laughs> uh, but, but you know, I I mean, you could ask Pablo, man. I'm just restless, you know, and and yeah, and it's not I only hear- the it's not only in the music, so. That's the best advice I can give you. Music is only one part of this business. This is a music business and a career. It, it's tied down to a business. You know, you have to look at it that way and you have to be able to go parallel with everything. Just as much effort you put into the music, as much effort you need to put into the marketing yep. and knowing you having all your ducks in a row so you can monetize correctly and hustling your networking, you know, like meeting people because you never know who can open that door for you uh yeah a lot of these things are, are about who you know anyways so that's yeah that's yeah advice a, a little bit of a lighter topic i, I have to ask this because we're friends laura from birmingham alabama says tony you're very handsome what do you do to uh what do you do to maintain your your, your looks dude that's <laughs> amazing advice? uh thank you so much you know <laughs> i have to I have to give thanks to to, to my Japanese jeans because I really do not do anything but just kind of work. But I used to work out a lot. I mean, Pablo works out more than me and look how he looks, you know. I mean, what can we do? You know, you got, some people are just blessed with better jeans. <laughs> just oh, kidding. Okay. I love you, Pablo. I love you. I love you. Uh, I mean, if you want to meet, I can, I can mute Tony at any point. Let me. Uh, no. Thank uh, you. No, but... Thank you uh, for your comment. That made me super happy. I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to rock and roll now. You hear that, Laura? So Tony is does nothing. He just he's just he's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe he's born with it. Um, I think it's the not, not true. It's not. It's not true. He's very uh, conscious of his own image. That's that's not true. I can I I will not vouch for that. He, he, <laughs> he, like he was very worried during the quarantine for his hair, and he got it fixed. But there was one in which it was like a a major crisis, you know, in life, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty big crisis. I'm not exactly. gonna lie for sure, for sure. You gotta make sure you, you know, you clean cut. That's that's important. Yeah. All right. Well, I think the, I think the cake's ready. So let's let's uh, get right, it up on the cake. screen. There it is. Wow. See? The whole thing. Happy birthday, Woo. Pablo! Look at that. <clears throat> I'm gonna take a picture Pablo. of that. That's a nice cake. Beautiful cake. I hope you like it. Um, and in addition, <clears throat> in addition, uh, we wanted to get you something. We we hand out a lot of prizes. That was a beautiful cake. We hand out. Thank you, Sandra, for baking it. We appreciate it. In addition, we asked the audience. We asked the audience um, what uh, what we should give you, what trophy we should give you. We always hand out trophies, and you've. I'm happy to say you've gotten one of the highest trophy honors in the history of the quarantine concert series. Um, and we want to give you the panda, the panda trophy. And the penguin trophy. You got both trophies, the panda and the penguin trophy. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You're welcome to make a speech, uh, Pablo, if you like. Your incredible music tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, um, we do have a word of the day winner that goes to 11 time defending champion, Ban Banerjee, has won the word of the day contest 11 times now. So let's give him the puppy trophy. If we can, I know I surprised you, Sandra, on it, but um, I would like for both of you to join me in applauding Ban Banerjee 11 times. Pantonality was the word of the day. 
Ban Banerjee, you win again. We applaud you. Yes. Daisy, you were close. You were close, but uh, there's, so if you're keeping score at home, uh, Ban Banerjee is in the rightful place. He has the puppy trophy. Um, we have Pablo with the panda and penguin trophy and the cake. And Tony Sukar just goes to sleep and wakes up looking beautiful. That's that's what we've learned on this broadcast, right? That's what it's about, my friend. That's all we need. <laughs> all right. Maybe um, you can play one more as out, um, Pablo. I do want to thank Sandra and Camilo for their uh, sound services. They're incredible people up in Queens. Let's get their website up on the screen. Soundworksrecording.com. Um, uh, if you're an artist and needs any any services, reach out to them. Mention one of their two dogs, Ori or Maui. Maybe Ori or Maui can listen into the next one. Why don't we bring Ori or Maui up on the screen and uh, they can listen in to, uh, to Pablo's last number. All right, over to you, Pablo. But I have a, I have a suggestion. Why don't we hear Tony? He's got the cajon right there. I know. <laughs> no, no, you're making me work. You're making me work. Tony, Tony's been muted. Tony's muted. His phone, his microphone's not working anymore. No, 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 Yo, they, 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 they're interrupting here. The aliens, man. My internet. <laughs> people wanna, people wanna hear you play, Tony. Come on. All right, all right, all right. Let me, let me make sure because we didn't do a prior sound check though. So, gotta make sure that it sounds decent enough. Let me, let me move Cajon solo. the computer back. And let me just kind of lower this guy. Let's go to Oreo and Maui back in there. This is not a crotch shot. It's just that's where the instrument goes. You know what I mean? All right. <laughs> All right. So can you hear it? Is it good? Is it fine? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this is actually my signature cajon. And uh, it's a Peruvian cajon made by LP. And it's going to the market very soon. So this is actually the first time I'm ever playing it on any type of stream or recording. So that's cool. This is brand new out of the factory. Everyone look between look between his legs. You'll, yes, you'll exactly. <laughs> That's a rhythm called Lando from Peru. Woo! <laughs> there you go, my friends, directly from Miami, Peruvian. Thank you all, thank you all. It's been a pleasure to be with you. <laughs> I am Tony Sucar. Oh, well. <laughs> all right. All right, you guys know also go to Pablo Gil's Facebook page and also check out a wonderful new album, Rice's Jazz Orchestra on Spotify, all streaming services. Oreo Malo, what do you think about it? You like it? Yeah, they're they're totally in love with it. There mm -hmm. they are. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone, for uh, for joining us tonight on the broadcast. Um, we have a busy weekend. Remember, we're doing two shows, both Saturday and Sunday. I'm back. And uh, both Saturday and Sunday. Look at them. Hey, How are you guys doing? You have something to say? No, nothing to say. <laughs> All right. I just want to check on my, my guys. So 3 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, 10 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. We have uh, the great Alamir, flamenco player, guitar player from Spain playing. And then um, Saturday, we have some incredible guests lined up. We're going to have Mandy Gonzalez, who stars in Hamilton, um, on our 99th show. She'll be singing Monday night, uh, Sunday night at 10 p.m. Eastern. And we have a special, special show for you on Monday for our finale. I'm very excited about it. So tune in for our last few episodes. Everyone have a good night. Stay well and stay home if you can. Good night, everyone.